be able to speak out and sing and praise the Lord and tell him, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. That's, a, that's the kind of series we're in, studying the word of God. These words that mean something in song, um, of course, they have to be generated by the word of God if they're going to be meaningful, and that's really uh, where those promises come from is the word of God. We'll talk about that a little bit. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. We will introduce again for a few moments um, our series, a short series in September, the month of September, looking at Victorious. Uh, some of you may have uh, seen my email that went out last evening. Uh, uh, some of you may have seen that it was coming from me, and you may not have read it. There's a lot of different uh, uh, fun thoughts and all of that, but and it, it talked of yesterday having our, our opening day of, of uh, Pee Wee football. It was uh, our first Saturday of Pee Wee football, the last time we had Pee Wee. Our first season on an, uh, was our inaugural season back in uh, 2019. We had such a sweet time yesterday. Uh, we had Meet the Coach, of course, Friday and, and met all kinds of children and parents. And, and then we had our kickoff yesterday morning from 9 to 11 and it was just a, a beautiful day in the Lord to meet and to see people and to, and to spend some time with children and parents. And uh, one, one simple thing, uh, I, I shared this with the first bunch, and uh, I think it uh, bears repeating. We, we, had a, we had a great set of coaches. We've got a head coach, an assistant coach for all of our, all of our teams. We have 12 teams, and we have a 5 6 division. And since we have so many really good coaches, and that doesn't mean that I am a good coach, but I bumped down to do five and six-year-olds, and so I've done five and six-year-olds with T-ball, and that's, that's pretty easy, and then, you know, it's not bad, and then happy five soccer, not so easy, uh, but learning how to do that and learning from people, but doing football, to me, you know, football is for high school students that, you know, you go out and coach high school students, and everybody hits one another. Well, you can do that in peewee football when you're pulling flags for five and six-year-olds, but I'm looking forward to the challenge and praise the Lord, and, and so I tried to stack my team, but I didn't, uh, I didn't know who they were. So since I make the teams, I didn't know what I had. We got out there, and we had just a sweet time. Now, we did play against Josh Bennett's team, and of course, Kyler comes along with Josh. And Kyler's kind of good. So the opening drive for us, we did okay, and then they got the ball, and they ran one play, and uh, yeah, they were ahead. No. <laughs> but Pee Wee football is off and running. I put in the email, please continue to pray for the children, the parents, and for the workers, the servants, all the head coach and assistant coaches. It's so wonderful to be able to minister in the love of Christ. Uh, one parent said to me, uh, and I think this is just a great reflection of, of the way parents are and what they end up experiencing as far as I know, the, this fam I, just, I don't know the family. They're new to the program and what we're doing in our ministry. And she said, after, I, said, I said to her, her son did really great, and I gave mom a bump. I said, he did a great job today at the end of and when we were done a little after 11. And uh, she said, ah, this was, this was I, I didn't know what to expect. I, I, I didn't know if it was going to be good, if it was going to be. It was fantastic. I had a great time. This was so fun. And, of course, I got, grabbed Cheryl to help, help a, a coach, and so she was the assistant coach. She said, the parents were having a, more, a better time, more fun than the kids were. And so you know that's really just letting you know that there's a sweet spirit there. And I just want to mention that. Of course, I put that in the email. And then a couple other things. Just want to make sure that you're reminded of our Acts 1A conference. It is coming up. You'll see lots of information this coming weekend. We're getting closer and closer. It's October 3rd through the 6th. Steve Kern is our uh, our preacher and speaker, he's been here. He's a great friend of our church. He's been here before a couple of different times, probably three or four times over the years. Uh, he was here five years ago. And so we're looking forward to uh, having Steve here. Good news in action. He's been a missionary for over 30 years. Uh, and, of course, Vida Nueva, they are part of a work that we have been involved in for many years. And you see uh, many of the works. That I think there's five or six works that we support through Good News in Action. And Steve will be here to preach and again, you will see much more information this coming week on that. And then uh, I wanted to just uh, uh, remind you with all the different things going on, and, and, and I, I understand, but good things. Our regional missions continues to move forward, and 
Uh, you had sleep in heavenly peace. peace. Uh, um, husband and wife came out here just a few weeks ago when we had our BBSC celebration, and they spoke of how much they were thankful and appreciative, and they're going to be, of course, the beneficiaries of charity for our charity golf tournament that's October 11th. In the email, I put in a couple of buttons. You can click to help if you cannot participate, uh, but there's also a button in there to register to play. If you can play in it uh, and the money, after we pay our bill, the, the money goes to sleep in heavenly peace. It's good to be part of an organization where a husband and wife are are really, they're believers. They love the Lord. They believe they're doing God's work and, and really providing a bed for children. And... Uh, you have a bed to sleep on, and then you, you're thankful, but you'd be surprised how many children in the metro area do not sleep on a bed. And so they're part of that, and they believe God's used them in his work. So please click a button on that email. If you're wondering, you can obviously call the office this week if you need to be connected to be part of that in some form or fashion for us to be part of mission work, just like Salt and Light and VBSC and all those different things. It's part of the mission work of God. And then I, I would just want to uh, highlight something very important for our church family. Um, last week, of course, uh, this is one week later that uh, Don Pratt took her last breaths on this earth. And she, of course, as the Bible tells us, she's in the presence of the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And we understand that promise in the scriptures. Uh, it's hard to believe already those few days have gone by. The celebration of life for her is going to be this week. Wednesday evening right here there will be uh, a visitation time. It starts at 5, goes to 7, or as long as it has to be. But attempt to be here as, as best as you can between 5 and 7. Uh, but we're looking forward to just loving on the family. Of course for Mike and uh, his two kids, the grandchildren. And, and uh, it, you can imagine, Dawn's a young lady uh, and uh, mom of two boys. And they miss her terribly. And the grandchildren, of course, uh, she just had her second grandchildren. Uh, he was just born just a few months back. And Gunner's now five. Gunner, Gunner, her first grandchild, is on my football team. And, oh, my, he is a pistol. He reminds me of his dad, Jimmy. And uh, that's a good thing. But uh, praise the Lord. And then Thursday, we will be having uh, services on Thursday. At noon, there will be... Um, graveside ceremony at the Veterans National Cemetery in Higginsville. That will be at noon for those that want to go out, uh, close, of course, family and close friends. 2 p.m. on Thursday, right here at First Bible Baptist Church, we'll be having a celebration of life, a memorial service, and uh, we're looking forward to that time to celebrate Don and, of course, honor and give glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, the as the family gets a little bit older in the Lord, a few of us, uh, we realize that there's more widows and widowers, um, and more and more as time goes on, please understand, be open to, be in the presence of God the Father and understand that God's word speaks of how we are to minister to widows and widowers. And... Uh, we can do well there and do things with excellence, and I pray that you will consider how you can minister. God will show you what to do and how to send a card or something like that or just kind words and prayer for, for Mike and, and all others, of course, that have lost their spouses. Um, been around here for a lot of years, and, and uh, one of the things that happens as a, as a pastor is you end up sometimes doing more funerals than you do baby dedications and marriages and weddings and things like that. So uh, that's just part of life. And God does tell us that it is appointed unto men once to die. And uh, so that's, it's a tough thing. Though as all of you can uh, be in your sorrows and somberness, you also rejoice in the Lord for Don's testimony of loving Jesus Christ. And we'll look forward to celebrating her life on Wednesday and Thursday. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. This series came to me and God put it on my heart uh, along with a couple of others that I was praying through. And, and we started it off last week. This is where God landed me. I'd already been preparing it this past week or two uh, up until last Sunday. And of course with some things that, that hit us personally. And uh, I know that also too, I got a, 
uh, a text on Friday that uh, members of our church over the many years, and they are another, another Bible teaching church, uh, um, Mark Scott. And I don't know if many of you know Mark. Uh, Mark and Barbara, three uh, daughters, twin uh, triplets, excuse me. And uh, Mark passed away uh, late last week. So um, also keep them in mind as we realize that, again, these things are part of our life in the Lord and part of the family of God. The promise of, and the hope in the, G- the Lord Jesus Christ is, is even more powerful than, again, we realize until something like this hits. In 1 Corinthians 15, the last few verses there, they come in in culmination to a verse that we have up on the screen, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be to God, which giveth, giveth us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we're going to read these few verses. That is our theme verse. I want to just introduce this a little bit, and then we're going to go to a place, and the title of our message when we get there will be more than conquerors out of Romans chapter number 8. You see, when we looked at this last week and got it off the ground, we talked about the gates of hell cannot prevail, and we did an introduction going off of Victorious in 1 Corinthians 15. And when you think of that old hymn that I sung a little bit of last year, uh, last week, uh, and we've sung over the years, but the, the second verse, I just want to just wanna read it to you while you look at that verse up on the screen and you think of where, again, some of the very best songs and hymns and spiritual songs have come to us over the years. They've come from the basis of the Word of God. In verse number 2 of Victory in Jesus, it says, I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And some sweet day I'll swing up, sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. You see, the promises of the Word of God are constantly and continually always ever true. And when we really get a handle on and go beyond the place of saying, oh, I think that could be true, or I thought that, or I, I kind of believe that, you actually say, I know this to be true. We have victory in Jesus Christ. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, Pick it up with me in verse number 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. We just sung a song exactly with these words. O death, where is thy sting? Or grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. But thanks be to God. Which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. When you stand on this promise of being victorious in the Lord Jesus Christ, it overflows into other areas. We remain in victory. We stand and we suffer. We go through hard times, but we still stand. We are sanctified and we allow God to sanctify us as we allow God to work in our hearts. So we sanctify ourselves unto God. We serve, we submit, we, we get involved. We, we say, God, I surrender. And we, all, we do that all in the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what it says right there. See, victory in our life I think sometimes we look at it and say, I just need victory over physical things. I need victory over these mental issues, these thoughts, my things that go on. I need victory in my vocational life, in my educational life. I need victory in all these areas. When instead we should say, God, I need to focus primarily on being victorious in the Lord Jesus Christ in my spiritual life, in my walk with the Lord, in my sanctification progression and process. I need to ask you, Father, God, in the name of Jesus, Jesus is my victory. Where can I have victory in relationships? I wonder if, again, as I had this up on the screen last week, that when I see through his victory over the grave, Jesus Christ has made us victorious in him, I wonder if we really just read this and say, yeah, that's what it says. Through his victory over the grave, Jesus Christ has made us victorious in him, period. 
well, I'm waiting for the second coming of Christ, and I looked in the back of the Bible, and I heard that God wins, and I heard all that, and Jesus is there, everything's going to be fine. And You already, as a believer in Jesus Christ, are the victor. Jesus Christ has already given you victory. Why do we continually sit around like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to have victory in this situation? Because oftentimes we're more concerned about victories, again, in this physical carnal stuff and not in the spiritual realm that God's talking about in the Holy Spirit by the Word of God. This is a spiritual book. It's the living Word of God. And shamefully, I believe when we look at our lives, we get stuck in this place where, oh, the sin is too much and this world is too much and the life is too much and there's no way I'm going to be able to overcome things. That's not the case for the believer. The lost person, for sure. And that's why you are the ambassadors, the emissaries. You are the missionaries to those people. But when you look up at this slide, I want you just to sit and listen and read it for yourself. Believers, would it not to be to our shame to live in sinful defeat while the lost world dies without Jesus Christ? Because we're walking around as believers in Jesus and we had this testimony at one time. Well, it may have been just a week or two or three and you've had some tough days. Okay. But the promises of the word of God put us in a place as the children of God, as the sons of God, as the daughters of the king. We are not the lost world. We are the believers. We are the saved and it's to our shame, to my shame, to live in sinful defeat while the lost world dies without Jesus Christ. Do we really, I said this last week, do we really want to be part of allowing the gates of hell to push against us when we're supposed to be on the offense as the church? The gates of hell do not prevail against the church and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. No way. Jesus said that. Jesus promised that, but yet we're sitting around wondering, oh, hell's just caving us in. That's not what the verses and the passage of Scripture and what Jesus is teaching with his apostles. He's saying, look, you are going to receive power. You are going to have all that you need. You're going to have to sanctify yourself. You're going to have to, again, allow me to then sanctify you. You're going to have to confess who I am. Peter, learn and listen that lesson. And as you get sanctified, you'll understand that you can make your identification with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are then led to a place where we say, I have victory in Jesus. So victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. When I looked up that word and I talked about it last week, I said, oh, the word victory. The word being victorious, it's not very complicated. It says triumph, victory, a conquest. Oh, wait a minute, a conquest. Hmm, I guess that's pretty clear from the Strong's Concordance. Until he have gained the victory. Well, Jesus Christ gained the victory on the cross and in the resurrection. And that's where the victory comes. He vanquished death and hell. He has the, gate, the keys to hell and death. Jesus Christ says, we are now not corruptible. We are now not Mortal, we are now eternally bound. You say, death has an awful, awful, rough feeling to me. I hate when people die. I get it. I do. But listen, death does not have a sting, the Bible says. It has no victory. Do you not believe that? I sure hope you do. The somberness of grief, the somberness of loss, the hurt of sorrow, and all that, it's real. But our victory is in Jesus. And it's real. And we are more than conquerors in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what it says up on the screen as you turn to Romans chapter number 8. I'm going to go through these few verses. We're going to read it. And then I just want to make a, a few practical applications from this passage tying together to 
our thoughts for a few weeks on being victorious. We are victorious in the Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. He gives us victory. It is already present in you. Well, the same is true about this message today. You are more than conquerors. The highlighted verse out of this message is found up on the screen on verse number 37. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. This is a great passage of scripture. It's just a few verses, verse 31 through 39, the last part. A lot of them break it up in this section, and we're going to take it and just see that, hey, being a conqueror really means to vanquish, to have triumph. And that's part of, again, the Strong's Concordance definition. I will tell you that, and you can look it up as, as quickly as I can, in the old days, you just opened up your old strong concordance and you looked up the word, and that's the only place that it's found. Conqueror or conquerors is only found one time in your Bible. Now, the word conquer shows up in the meaning of it in the strong, overcome or conquer or prevail. There's the word prevail, prevail against. In victory, so there's a similarity. There is an integration in the Word of God talking about victory in Jesus, my Savior, forever. And it's truly and completely perfect in the Word of God. I take that now and I've got to put that into my life. You need to put it into your life. Because again, victory in physical stuff and mental stuff, yeah, that's fine. But what about just a simple Victory in Jesus and my sanctification every single day, every single week, every single month. You say, Pastor, you sound like a broken record. Well, if you open up the Bible, it might sound like a broken record too. But it's not broken. <laughs> it's perfect and alive, and it's the right record. It's the record of Jesus Christ. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. The Bible is about, of course, the king and his kingdom, and he has it to come. Right now, we are his church, and he's fulfilling everything that he's desired to do. Nothing is surprising God at all. So when we look at Romans chapter number 8, we pick it up at verse number 31. Let's read the text. Don't forget, you got up above it, of course, some really neat verses that I'll just reference rather quickly. Because he's asking a question, what shall we then say to these things? Well, what things? The fact that you're justified and that you're born again, that all things work together for good, that them will love God, that you're predestinated to become conformed to the image of Christ, some good stuff, good promises. So let's read it. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? I like that verse, don't you? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things. Have you noticed that word you ask a few times? Us. Against us. Freely give us. Pay attention to that. Here we go. That group collective for the church uh, pronoun you ask. Watch this. Verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. The Bible teaches of four different groups of elect. Israel, the Bible says that Jesus is the elect. Christians, of course, we have the elect of God. Angels, they're called the elect in 1 Timothy. So there's the elect. Well, we, once you get saved, are in the elect, the church. Okay? Here we go. Boom. Simple. Straightforward. Hey, who's going to charge anything to God's elect? Who's going to overtake or go against God's elect. God says, you are more than conquerors. I'm not going to let it happen to you. Verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. If you look at verse 26, it says, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. For us. Now again, the scriptures aren't about us. But God says, they're about my son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and I've done things through him for you. For us. And it's beautiful. So he goes and he continues in verse number 35. He says, 
who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, an Old Testament quote in the New Testament fulfilling prophecy, Psalms 44, verse, 30, verse 22, for, they say, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Hey, the Old Testament saints, they went through some rough times. Believers, we've got some rough times here. So it's just really a reiteration of the Old Testament principle that we go through uh, persecutions, tribulations, sufferings, yes. But here's the really cool stuff. Verse 37, here it is. Oh, nay. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, many of you probably have memorized these verses, that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The us is the believers. That's us. I remind you often in our studies and our preaching and our messages on teaching the word of God. We have received a whole lot better deal from God than we give him. Loved us. For us. Separated us. Who's going to separate us? us from the love of God. You see, through him that loved us, we have victory. Through him, there's no condemnation. There's no more religious obligation to earn my way up to heaven. This whole section, the last part of this chapter, is to kind of wake up, believer, and realize what you have. Kind of like chapter 15 in 1 Corinthians, where you say, hey, wake up. Put some things down. You have this incredible life. Just, just embrace the grace of the Lord and you can be victorious all the time. The oppression, is, the depression, the stuff, that's, it's hard. It is real. <coughs> some of his stuff is really overtaken in the progression of many things in life. But today when we look at the scriptures, we're reminded of the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for all of us. When you notice, again, verse number 26, for us. When you notice in verse number 31, for us. When you notice in verse number 32, for us. When you notice in verse number 34, for us. For us, my goodness. Thank you, God. So it leads me to my first one here. Up on the screen. More than conquerors means we are endowed with positional power. Positional power. What's your position? Your position's in God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's power in that. The Bible teaches me very clearly this. That God with us. Matthew 1, 23 is the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Sometimes I think we forget. We say, okay, what do you mean? God, well, he is with us and he is for us. And it says even just in this simple little piece of text how reinforced it is that we have positional power in the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and the Father in heaven. Each place. Again, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also help with our infirmities. But the Spirit itself maketh the intercession for us. The Holy Spirit is for us. Go down to verse number 31. If God be for us. It's right up on the screen. If God be for us. The big U.S. That's not the United States. It's us. Who can be against us? Verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us. There it is. The Trinity for us. If you want to talk to people about the Bible and what it means and just some simple passages of Scripture. All you need is... On it's not just a Romans road and memorize a few verses. You can answer a lot of theology and doctrinal questions for just about every question through the book of Romans. It's a tremendous, tremendous letter. And when you look at the truth and the doctrine of being more than conquerors, that that's what we have and we say, oh gosh, I, I've forgotten that verse. Well, 
I said it earlier today in the other service. I said, hey, why don't we, and I, I mentioned every once in a while, why don't we just memorize a few more Bible verses? And then they come to mind. You know, like all those crazy songs that you memorized over the years that were so easy, or the movie lines that you know? I don't want to say anything, Brian. By the way, our sweet buddy, there was no one, but I think Don Pratt was the only one that could beat Brian. Knowing movie lines or movies or something, we would say something, that would be some for the next one. Uh, and you think about how God is for us. Positionally, we have that power. If God is for us, we are conquerors. You say that's pretty straightforward. Again, then how quickly can we put aside the straightforward truth that brings us positional power as and you say, how in the world can I be a conqueror? The first piece is positional power. The second one is this. We're more than conquerors. And when we say that, it means we are covered in privileged promises. Just close your eyes, or you don't have to close. Just think for a moment all the promises you know from the Bible. Each one of you in this room, I know of many, many of you have been saved for a long time and memorized verses. You probably, I don't know, Ken Ball, you got saved a long time ago. I bet you've heard more Bible lessons than I've ever, ever heard in my life. Thought of many Bible verses, memorized them. How do you memorize and remember them? Well, how about promises? Doc, you've been teaching the Bible for 100 years, even though you're only 60, and you think, how many promises come to your mind right now? Mike Sidebottom, Dave Gonzalez, guys that I know, deacons and leaders in our church, been saved for a long time. The promises that you have are privileged. Well, I need my privilege. The privilege is from the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are privileged in God. The Father, through the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And when the Holy Spirit reproves you of things and he reminds you of stuff, you go... Whoa, all scriptures given in by inspiration of God. It's probable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness that the man of God may be complete and finished work of God, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Woo, that's good stuff, because that's God's stuff. And he says, I will promise you this. You will have privileged promises, and you and I forget all this privilege in Jesus Christ we have. Let Satan do all that he wants. He's bound by God and he only gets permission by him. Let the world do all the awful junk that it wants. It's already conquered. Your flesh has already been victoriously saved and it's put away. You can allow the Holy Spirit of God to run your life or let your flesh overtake you. But you have a privileged promise when you are born again. Privileged promises that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers. Those verses right there, verses 38 and 39. Nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Simple promise. It's powerful, but it's privileged. Think of the incredible privilege and promises that we receive when we get saved. When I was lost before I got saved, I thought I could earn my way to heaven. Eh, wrong, Mark. You are not right. How do I know? Well, that's your opinion. No, let me see what the Bible says. Somebody show me what the Bible says. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. For by grace are you saved through faith. Not of yourselves is the gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. And then you get saved and you open up this Bible and you go, oh my gosh, that's what's there for me? Whew. you got to grab something like this. Now, I used this as an illustration earlier. Many of you have seen a God Promises book before. I talked about this at first service. Oh, Don, we were looking for God's promises. Simple, this, this type of way, you know. There's a lot of promises for this, promise, And she found it. That's what Don could do, man. She could find a deal. I think she found, like, found them for like a buck or two, you know. They're awesome. And by the way, these are made for guys. I don't know if you've ever seen them. The girls, you'll go figure things out. Guys, we, we don't, you know, it's like when we go to look for something. So this is why it's made for guys. You open the front. 
Now, some of you, how many of you have seen one of these? A few of you? Maybe five or ten? Yeah. Jesus is your Savior, Lord, love, peace, forgiveness, whatever. He's your infallible authority. The Bible's your infallible authority. The de- Look at all this stuff right there. You know what you do, guys? Gals, you'll figure it out. Guys, this is for guys. You go to the page number. Isn't that easy? What do I do when I'm angry? Why did I turn to that one? What's that? I didn't do that on purpose. I think God. And then I read these Bible verses. Look at the promises. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. James chapter number 1, verses 19 and 20. There's a promise from God. What do I do when I have doubts? What do I do when I am, what does the Bible have to say about Satan? What can, I, what can you do to change the world? The promises of God. What a great little book to give somebody because they'll get them in the Bible. And then maybe it'll lead to them getting in the Bible. Because it says up there very simply, in tying that one verse together, he gives us everything that we need. It's a great verse. Verse number 32. It says, God delivered Jesus up for us all, and in return, he also gave, freely gave us all things. All things. Once you're born again, all things are open to you. The privileged promises of the book, the word of God, God's promise book is really this. But this one is just an example of somebody taking the time to categorize things so that you can look it up clear, clear, uh, easily and clearly. For us, he freely gives. James chapter 1, verse number 17, some of you know it, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness. I love that. With no, there's no variation of God. There is no changing of God, neither shadow of turning. And then you start thinking of that old song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. There's no shadow of turning. It comes from that Bible verse. Psalm 34, verse 10. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Whew. Promises throughout the Bible. Promises throughout the Word of God. There's actually promises about the promises of the good things of God that are freely given to us. It leads us to our third thing. More than conquerors means we are honored by personal partnership. Privileged partner, uh, pr- excuse me, privileged promises. Now we got personal partnership. That's in our prayer. We talk about partnerships and having partnership with people and, and being together with other believers and partnering in ministry. There is personal partnership with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That comes through our intercession and prayer and how he makes it possible for us to be able to go to Abba Father. Again, as I mentioned it a few weeks ago when we were in Galatians, it's part of that study that we had when we had our men's conference When you look at verse number 34, you see this. It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. The part of the verse is up there. Who also maketh intercession for us. How often this past week did you remember that? Did you forget that? See, the way that I would forget it is if I didn't spend much time in prayer. I'd forget. See, intercessory prayer is a command, not a suggestion from God for the New Testament saints to do upon one another. Petitions, yes. Intercessions, we're supposed to do that for others. Prayers. But here's the funny thing. We forget that the God of the universe is making intercession for us. How does that work? Oh, gosh. I've got some verses in Hebrews to study it through, and I have. But it amazes me and overwhelms me. As it says in verse number 26, that the Holy Spirit maketh intercession for us. 
1 John chapter number 2 says this. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And this is great, because this is verse number 2. It comes off of the late part of chapter number 1 of 1 John. When we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins. But follow along, because the, the chapter kind of runs right into chapter number 2, and it's teaching. Verse number 2 of 1 John chapter number 2 says, And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only. John's writing to the early believers. But also for the sins of the whole world. He intercedes. He's the advocate for all of your sins. You don't need any more advocacy because he's the only advocate needed. And he's already done it all. The veil of the temple, rent in twain from top to bottom. The wall of partition, it says in Ephesians, is come crumbling down. In the Old Testament, they needed an advocate continually. A priest, a high priest. They had to, the priest had to do the work. The high priest has to go in. We are the priests. We are the ones that have been set apart by God who shows us in the New Testament... Through the Lord Jesus Christ, we're more than conquerors. If God is for us, who can be against us? We are more than conquerors. And it's all part of this passage of Scripture that points back to having victory in Jesus, our Savior, forever. We can really get somewhere here, church. We really can, and we need to. Young, old, and everybody in between. Don't look at anyone else for their responsibility. For it is your responsibility and my responsibility to look at the scriptures and say, God, how is it that I can possibly be more than a conqueror, as the Bible says? I'm looking for someone else to show me. I got that. Examples and models of what people look like in the Lord Jesus Christ are good. Follow me as I follow Christ. That's fine. But golly gee, take up your personal responsibility. I need to take up my responsibility even deeper. I've got to go further. Because fourthly, it says more than conquerors means we are loved in peculiar persecution. Peculiar persecution. It says in verse number 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, a sword. And of course, I read verse 36 earlier, which is a quote from Psalm 44, for they... For thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. It says up there on the screen this, very simply. Verse number 37. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Ah, oh, that love of God's coming into play. Yes, again and again and again and again. It does. Because we somehow want to squelch. Or negate when he's saying, nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. The verse would be great up to that point, but he says, wait a minute, that loved us. Verse 35 and 36 tell us, this, this world wants to keep us from loving Jesus Christ. This world wants you to shake your fist at Jesus Christ. This world wants you to believe that you are your own best God. Because they started it back, I heard, a long time ago. This world and the kingdoms of this world. And this evil, wicked one, the serpent, said, In Genesis 3, you can be as gods. You can be as gods. Whoa. This world wants you to believe that you can do this on your own. It wants you to believe that, again, everything's found in you. It's found in Jesus in you. It's found in the Holy Spirit in you. It's founded in the Word of God that's sitting right here on your lap. In whatever electronic version you've got or the paper version. It's found there where he shows you how much and shows me how much he loves us. S 2 Corinthians, one of my favorites. 2 Corinthians. I've got to just mention it real quick again. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. 
near the end of his second letter. He says in verse number 9, one of those ones you know, right? My grace is sufficient for thee. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities than the power of Christ, that the power of Christ, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. We're singing about that this morning. Verse 10, though, comes a little bit deeper here. Therefore, he says, Paul, I take pleasure in infirmities, reproaches, necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. Which goes back to what he said to these guys in Rome and the Roman crew of the church that says, hey, for thy sake we're killed all the day long. But he says, for when I am weak, then am I strong. Don't you know that to be true? Not just one time or two times or a few times in Jesus Christ believers. <whistles> I remember as a lost man thinking I was so tough. And in secret, I would just crumble, put on a good front for people. That is a way of creeping itself back into even my life and my flesh as a, as a believer in the wrestling match of, hey, you can make it through, you can make it through. But I used to go home and crumble because I knew that I had no power. When I was weak, I was really, really, really weak. But Paul says this, when I am weak, then am I strong. So I rejoice. I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and persecutions. He says in verse number 11, I become a fool in glorying. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you for nothing. Am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. Paul knew he was nothing in his own self. He wasn't conqueror. He wasn't a conqueror, more than a conqueror in his own flesh. But in the Lord Jesus Christ, he was more than a conqueror. We finish up with this one. Lastly, more than conquerors means this as we pull it all together at the end. The last couple verses. We are secured in perfect preservation. There is a preservation that comes. There is an incredible sense of, hey, God has me. God has told me that he will never leave me nor forsake me. Well, let's go to the offensive side. We're more than conquerors. This is a going on the offense series. This is we are in victorious in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to stop backpedaling so much, church, believers. Stop backpedaling. You don't go on the offensive and be offensive to people. You do not become sinful in their faces as we've talked of this more than once over the years. But to be on the offense means, hey, but you have to get in the word of God. You really need to have the Bible as a centerpiece. Your worship has to be where it has to be. But it's worth it because there's lost people. Lost people going to hell. And we're the ones who are supposed to tell them how to get out of there. Tell them about Jesus who has the gates to death and hell, uh, the keys to death and hell. You see, we are secured in perfect preservation. When we're born again, God says, hey, I will preserve thee. The Lord preserve thee, it says in Psalm 121. From all evil, he preserves thy soul. The Lord preserve thy going out and thy coming in. Psalm 121. Psalm 140. Preserve me, O Lord, from the violent man. He will preserve me. From the violent man. He says it in verse 1 and verse 4 of Psalms 140, which means it must be pretty important. The prayers of the psalmists. Psalm 145, the Lord preserves all them that love him. We're more than conquerors, and that means that we are secured in perfect preservation. It says there in the scriptures and highlighted up on the screen. Verse number 8, for I'm persuaded that 38, that neither death nor life nor angels nor powers nor things come nor present nor things to come. Verse number 39, nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us. Separate us. I know you know that verse, many of you, but sometimes we think, wow, since I'm already set up, I can play defense. I'm already good. So I know the verses. I, nothing can separate me from the love of God was in Christ Jesus. I can, be, I can live on the edge. I can live like this. I can live. 
whoa, 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 whoa. To our shame that our pride and our arrogance and our full of ourselves and our flesh would get in the way of us not living victorious, but actually live a defeated life. Hey, listen, when you're constantly playing defense with your walk in the Lord, when you're always backpedaling, I don't know anything, I don't know anything, I don't know what to do, I can't do this, I can't do that, I don't know if God... When you continually backpedal, after a while, you go, wait a minute, I can't back up anymore. What do I do from there? I need to go before God. I need to repent and make things right. Godly sorrow worketh into repentance. I need to say, Father, forgive me for just walking away. Maybe I've been a prodigal kid from you, dear Father in heaven, and I just need to make things right with you. Thank you for coming and holding on to me and bringing me back. And then, okay. What do we do now? Well, you may not be able to walk right into that conquering place, but go back and read and start again in reading the Word of God. Start in the Gospels again. Start in the letters. We're in, we're in a study in Romans. Read in Romans and say, okay, God, I understand what you're saying in verse number 37. Because it says up there, nay, in all things, all these things we are more than conquerors through, them, through him that love us. You are conquerors not by yourself. It's through him that loved us. The meaning of the word, very simply, absolutely to carry off the victory, to be victorious of Christ, victorious as Christ was over all his foes. Christian, when you hold fast, unmovable, steadfast, always abounding in the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That doesn't mean go do more ministries. It's the work of Christ every day, the sanctification of him every day. And yes, it will lead to you serving. Yes, that's good. But it puts you in a place where you go, ah, that doesn't have any effect. That doesn't have any effect. That has effect, but I still have the word of God to conquer this whole mess that I'm in. If God is for us, who can be against us? In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. To finish up with this very, very simple statement, his unconditional love, as we finished out, verse number 38 and 39, it makes us more than conquerors. As you, are you today fully persuaded? Are you fully persuaded? today by God's love for you. That's our invitation. Please bow your heads for a word of prayer. As we pray and we come to this time, I want you to consider what God has shown you and talked to you about through the word and through the preaching, through the Holy Spirit. Father, thank you for your word this morning and our time in worship and singing and in prayer in the preaching and teaching of your word by your Holy Spirit. I pray for the congregation of saints. I pray for the fellowship of you in Jesus and the bride of Christ that you will bring us to a stronger place. Our fellowship truly is with you more than anything else. And I pray, God, that we would come to the realization that you really love us and that we are more than conquerors because of that incredible love you have for us. God, have your way in this time of prayer, this time of invitation. Draw people as only you can in Jesus' name. Please stand.